Hi guys, I'm not sure where we'll fit this in the whole episode order, like we want to probably do more than what I'm just about to do in one episode, so we'll see where it ends up, more or less. But I just want to illustrate, like, again, uh, the importance of our uh, mass ratio when it comes to the rocket equation. Because what we had here was the uh, rocket that took Bob past the Mun and safely back. And we can sort of ca calculate what delta V this has quite easily. It brings along two tons of reaction mass. Which means if I just bring out my calculator and bring it on screen, which I assume still works. Let's remember that this is a new version of OBS and not sure if this is going to stutter something horribly, but this is our calculator. So our dry, uh, our wet mass rather is uh, 3.95. Our dry mass is going to be two tons less than that, so that's 1.95. So that's our mass ratio. Remember, we take the logarithm of that, we multiply that by our specific impulse, which is not 456, rather it's 345, and then we multiply that by our constant of gravity, which is that. So our current stage has 2389 delta V. And you're thinking, well, that's probably as good as it's going to get, right? Because looking at our engines right now, this has the highest ISP, right? It has 345, so that's better than all the other ones who have, well, none of them go over 320. Oh, you, you're in for a surprise right now because what, 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 what we'll do is slap this on instead and try to figure out the same thing. This one has a very big advantage. It's the mass right here. It weighs 0 0.1 tons compared to the 0 0.5 tons of this. So if you want to sort of illustrate that difference, what that means is that if we bring along that one instead of that one, it's like bringing along that one plus, not one, but two material base. That that looks like a lot of mass savings to be had, right? I mean, you don't imagine that being that, but uh, obviously the numbers don't lie. This weighs 200 kilograms each, and this weighs a whopping half a ton. So you don't want to bring along an engine. That's just going to slow you down," <laughs> said no one. Anyways, uh, what? Wh well, I don't take my word for this. Let's just run the numbers. We had 2,400 basically with our previous setup. Now our wet mass is going to be 3.55. Our dry mass is now down to 1.55. Remember, we have a lower I ISP here, so uh, it's all going to come down to our our mass ratio to see what what the, what this ends up being. So it's 320 times 9.81, which will make up our exhaust velocity, and we get 2601. We have more delta V with an engine with lower ISP. And you're like, but but why? How? And, uh, and and this is sort of what you'll see, is that for most rockets, you want the smallest engine possible. At least once you're up in orbit. Like if we wanted to launch using this, then obviously we would get like higher gravity losses, because this is three times the thrust. But you can also sort of see like the th thrust to weight of this is way better. Because we're getting 20 kilonewtons out of 100 kilograms of booster. Whereas this weighs 500 kilograms, so we would expect about 100 kilonewtons of thrust if it had the same TWR as this one. Of course it's not getting that, it's getting this, but yeah, you want it for the ISP. So when would you use this? Well, it turns out 
that there's a crossover and I'll overlay this right now and you'll see it again. It's, it's basically the same concept why we wouldn't use this but rather use this but uh, not quite as clear because the ISP is actually worse for this one but it still ends up being better in most cases. Anyways I'll let the math talk or the math nerd or the future me or whatever you want to call him. Well, rather than letting myself talk all the time, I'm getting way too much credit. Like, I didn't figure all of this out on my own. Uh, I, I'll just uh, link this tool, which uh, I haven't used much myself, but I found it uh, trying to research this this video. Actually finding like graphs or something to put inside this video so I could annotate them. But then I realized this this tool sort of speaks for itself. So uh, why should I add my my cluttered handwriting to anything. Uh, instead, yeah, just look this tool up. It has a lot of options. It's the optimal engine charts. It's not perfectly updated, as you can see. Uh, so it doesn't have like the making history uh, engines in here or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have the updates to uh, monoprop either, which saw an overhaul in uh, tank masses. I forget if they increased or decreased the tank masses actually. I know they increased the density, but other than that I'm not actually sure what happened with that. Anyways, uh, you can uh, tweak this to your heart's content. You can say, well, how patient am I going to be with that? What's my payload range? Which uh, variable do I fix? Because, well, you're going to have three variables in this. We are going to have like a, your thrust to weight, your payload mass and your delta V and uh, one is going to be fixed and the other two will vary and you can sort of imagine that uh, yeah it's it's a pork chop plot we know them we love them we've seen them in uh, transfer window planners and uh, everything in between that and this i suppose actually most of us have probably only seen them in transfer window planners but that's that's enough for us we know what they're doing uh, so the, you, we have plotted the payload mass versus the delta V and you can sort of see in which ranges each engine performs well. And the LV-909 Terrier, the one we uh, thought was the best engine since sliced bread, well it has a niche where it's the best. But you can sort of see that this band is uh, considerably more narrow than say uh, the Spark engine. Which, sort of, uh, which also seems to find its niche in uh, in the regimes where we sort of expect to be uh, more so than uh, than the terrier, because uh, the most you the most common things we'll send about is are going to be between sort of like one and five tons in mass, I imagine. Of course, depends on how you play the game uh, and all that, but. If you try to make your payloads as small as possible, well, you can usually make them very small if you sort of think about, well, okay, what do I really need to bring along? And given that and uh, what uh, delta V ranges you usually see yourself moving within, you can see that, well, in that range, uh, the Spark engine is going to be the superior choice. Uh, unless you go heavier but then the Nerva is going to fairly quickly outperform the Terrier so the the band in which the Terrier is the best engine to use is kind of limited like the most useful thing according to this graph what it seems to indicate is that the, ner the Terrier is very good as an OMS for heavy space planes because uh, w well, an OMS is going to require something uh, like between 300 or to 500 delta V. Uh, if you're bringing more than that you, to perform uh, on-orbit maneuvers when you're staying sticking to low carbon orbit, then you probably need to work on your rendezvous techniques, which we will of course touch on in a not so distant video. But um, but outside of that regime. Like if you go below, lower in uh, payload mass, well then 
then the spark is going to outperform it. And if we go higher up in delta V requirements, then the nerve is going to outperform it. And you can s sort of uh, play around with these settings and see, well, okay, what if I vary my payload between whatever, what if I vary my delta V requirements, uh, like for a month transfer, for instance, we know that's going to be 860 delta V, right? So then we can now input this and we can sort of say, okay, we uh, pretty much want those ranges and see what happens when we vary the payload mass and then we calculate and we see where everything sort of falls into place. And uh, yeah, excellent colors here. No, not really. Uh, but you, you can see here again we have uh, sort of narrow bands for the terrier while other engines sort of do things differently, let's say. And we can sort of find where and how everything sort of falls into place. And yeah, obviously you want the Narva because payload fraction is insane on that thing. That's good. Anyways, just a little tool for you to play around with when you're not listening to me, which um, I mean, I assume you do other things during your day. I hope you do. <laughs> And uh, I'll hear from, well, you'll hear from me in the next video. The more I hear from you, the better, but uh, yeah, one comment th so far in this series. Come on, guys. Uh, see you later.